Good afternoon, my name is Greg Davis. I'm a rhinologist or a sinus doctor at the University of Washington Medical Center. And we're here at the Seattle Science Foundation in the middle of the Seattle Otology and Advanced Rhinology course. And this is a course that brings uh, otolaryngologists or ear, nose, and throat doctors from all over the country and even other parts of the world to come to the Seattle Science Foundation to learn how to do uh, improved sinus surgery and improved ear surgery. I'm here with Dr. Qureshi from uh, from Cupertino California. Cupertino, California. Thank you. And he's not an otolaryngologist. He's actually a veterinarian physician. And I wanted to just ask you, what inspired you to come to this course? Well, I've been doing uh, otoscopy for 20 years. I use conventional uh, scope and had troubles visualizing, so we got the otoscope. And doing otoscopy for 20 years and still having trouble with the ears. And so in veterinary community, we generally deal with otitis externa and uh, then it doesn't resolve and uh, <clears throat> it keeps coming back. And, and so at some point you realize that either your diagnosis is not proper or your treatment is not proper. And so finally I realized that uh, the, the problem is not only otitis externa but otitis media and there's a lot more structure involved that creates the problem over and over and over. So quite often I listen to my clients, I get clients from all over uh, just complaining and even when I go to some uh, seminars or some, 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 some places people come and talk to me about their dog's ear problem, it just never resolves. So I thought I needed to get some more information. I needed to educate myself a little bit more. And so I got in touch with the Seattle Science Foundation. Uh, one of the, uh, the best place to find out about this thing is a sales rep, drug sales rep or equipment sales rep. And I contacted a stores uh, local guy, uh, Matt, uh, and he gave me this information. And um, I called and uh, I was very surprised that uh, I was uh, accepted here to join the course. Great. So, you know, we think about humans and animals. What type of animals are you talking about? Are these guinea pigs, cats? What, what type of animals do you treat? Well, we treat in our practice mainly as a dog and cat, but we see guinea pigs, rabbits, uh, sometimes we see zoo animals, birds, reptiles, uh, all different species. Uh, well, that's impressive because I think of how challenging treating humans can be. They certainly can have different anatomy from one human to another, but now you think about treating different species all together. That's amazing. And though the anatomy may be different, what do you think about the disease process? You know, as we've talked today about treating chronic sinus disease, two days ago we had lots of discussion about treating middle ear disease. Do you think they're similar between humans? And animals? It is very similar. It is quite similar. The only difference is the anatomy is a little bit different. They might have the longer ears or smaller tympanum or uh, so it's, it's not much different. Everything is there just like humans. It's just in a different size and different shape. Uh, and uh, to learn about humans, how they are handled, helps us a lot about how we can help uh, other species. Excellent. So how has attending this course changed how you may practice your medicine next week? So one of the main reasons why I was here is definitely I wanted to learn about ears and nose and throat and sinus and everything. Uh, but one of the main reasons was I wanted to see how the tympanic graft is done. Uh, a lot of cases that I see have no tympanum left because of uh, iatrogenic uh, approach or, or some wrong uh, treatment or severe otitis created uh, total absence of tympanum. And so tympanic graph is very important and that's basically what I wanted to find out. I tried to find some information in veterinary community and I went absolutely nowhere. Uh, all the experts, all the universities I got con in contact with, uh, they almost thought that I was crazy enough to even think about doing tympanic graph. So I 
I, I think it is a challenge and and so that was the reason I came here and then I'm learning quite a bit about sinuses and sinus problem which really opened my eyes and, and when I go back I'm going to start looking into a lot of uh, issues that we face we don't have any answers so I would start exploring those things. Well some people may think come on do animals really get a sinus infection and the answer I can tell from personal experience, I've been fortunate enough to take care of a gorilla at our local zoo, at the Woodland Park Zoo. And we've had a nice friendly discussion about this. The gorilla was actually dying from a chronic sinus infection, a severe infection. And what I took home from that was just the immense amount of care that the veterinary doctors and the gorilla keepers have for these animals. And it truly was a great teamwork between human medicine and gorilla medicine. And you need both because they're so different, yet they needed the skills of a rhinologist to surgically fix this gorilla. And fortunately he did well and uh, continued to live and he's had a daughter since then, so it's been rewarding. Um, but what message would you give to ear, nose and, human ear, nose and throats out there and other medicine specialties? How can they interact with veterinarian doctors? Well, that's very impressive that uh, you had a connection with zoo and, and had to help the gorilla. And so the, the connection is quite a bit, um, uh, there is a lot of advances in veterinary field, there's a lot of advances in uh, human field, and when it gets combined, I think it is going to help uh, both the species, uh, you know, sometimes uh, there are things that uh, we we learn tremendous amount from from human side, and when when uh, human uh, MDs doctors they see some of the things they can help the veterinary field animals quite a bit. So, I think combining is is a very very nice uh, situation. And again, I was very impressed. One of the things that impressed me here is how welcome I was. I was quite hesitant about stepping in and thinking that, okay, wh how are they going to look at me? What are they going to think? Why am I here? But everybody was very helpful. The faculty, the participants, uh, everybody helped me a lot. Well, we've enjoyed having you. And certainly when you have been kind enough to share the amazing photos you've taken of you and your care for animals around the world, it's really been exciting to have you. So. Dr. Karashi, thank you for your time and thank you for coming to our course. I very much appreciate your, all My your pleasure. help. Thank, thank you. you.